Today I want to show you how we can take a simple song like You Are My Sunshine and turn it into jazz. Going from this and turning it into this. four levels of reharmonization coming on up. All right, so here we have You Are My Sunshine, classic bedtime tune. My mom sang it to me. I sing it to my daughter before she goes to bed. So we have a one chord in concert C is how it starts. So it goes. Then we go to a four chord, which is F major. back to C major, a one chord, all right? And that's really what You Are My Sunshine is. It's just one, four, one, then back to a four, then back to a one, then we go back to a one, and then we have G, which is a five, to a one, okay? Very simple song, and all of these are really just assuming triads. So it sounds like this. <laughs> doesn't get much simpler than that, but how do we start turning this tune into jazz? In comes level one. Okay, so level one is basically turning all of these chords into seventh chords, because really, when we look at jazz, the most basic kind of chord is not triads, it's seventh chords. So now, the one chord becomes a one major seventh chord. The four chord becomes a four major seventh chord and so on and so forth until we get to the five chord at the very end and it becomes a five dominant seventh chord, so G7. So just by turning these into seventh chords, it's gonna start sounding more like jazz. So sounds like this. <laughs> in the style of jazz, adding some swing can be nice too. So with our most basic reharmonization done, let's spice things up a little bit and move on to level two. Now, as you may have noticed, You Are My Sunshine doesn't have a lot of chord changes. And this goes against the code of jazz because jazz musicians love to add chord changes. And so the most basic chord changes we can start adding to this particular tune is two five chord progressions. So let's go check it out. Let's start with the melody. Okay, in bar one. Okay, nice. Now, what I'm looking over though is at bar five, we need to get to F major seven. So I can add a two, five, one to get to F major seven. In this case, I'm gonna do what's called a long two, five, one. So in bar three, I'll add a G minor seven, and then I'll add a C seven going to that F major seven. So now it sounds like this. <laughs> What we can do though as well is get back to this C major seven by adding a two, five, one. So D minor seven to G seven leading into the C major seven. So just by doing this, we're adding more harmonic movement to the tune. So from the beginning. So that two five actually sounds really nice in adding more chordal movement. Now again, we're going back to F major seven with the 
So there's a way we can also get back to that by adding a short two, five, one, which basically means we're just gonna play each chord for two beats each. So that'd be G minor seven and C seven. So once again, okay, is what it sounds like. But again, in bar 10, we can also add a D minor seven, a two, and a G7, a five, going into the C major seven as well. So. Right, so now looking ahead at the last little bit, it's a little bit redundant with this C major hanging out, it goes. So what we're gonna do is we're going to cross out the C major seven that would be in bar 13 and instead add a D minor seven over top of it. So now effectively making the last phrase a two, five, one. So when we're finished with it, then we have all these two, five, ones in here and this is what it sounds like. So already getting a lot jazzier, but let's go ahead and take things up a notch and go to level three. So one problem with level two is that everything is really, really redundant. You basically, yes, have seventh chords and two fives. It sounds jazzier. It's a little bit more interesting, but it's still a little bit too redundant. So let's go ahead and do what jazz musicians love to do and add even more harmonic movement. So we'll start out the same with the C major seven in bar one, but now what I wanna do is look ahead at bar three, cross out that G minor seven altogether, because what I actually wanna do instead is starting in bar two, I want to do a two, five to A minor seven, which is the relative minor, uh, the sixth chord of C major. So that's a B minor seven flat five to an E seven to an A minor seven, okay? So it sounds like this. So much more interesting adding the extra harmonic movement. Now, of course, in bar four, we had the C7 before because we were doing a two five to F major. So instead we'll make this into a short two five. So just G minor seven to C7 all in one bar to get around to our F major seven. So now it sounds like this. Okay, so now we're at this F major seven. And so before going into the C major, we had this two, five, one. But what I'd rather do is add something a little bit more of a twist, something that has a little bit more harmonic spice to it. So what I'm going to do is actually cross out this two, five going into C major. And instead we're going to do an F minor seven going to a B flat seven on beats three and four. And essentially what this is doing is going from F major seven to F minor seven to B flat seven is what we call modal modulation. We're kind of boring from the parallel minor, but in addition, adding this B flat seven, it's kind of like this two five motion, but the B flat seven actually serves as what we call a backdoor dominant leading into the C major seven. A backdoor dominant is basically approaching a one chord a whole step below with a dominant seventh chord. It gives the sound of tension and release without using a five to one relationship. So we're gonna use this tactic in here. So it sounds like this. So really kind of an interesting sound. We'll leave the G minor seven, C seven going into the F major seven but I really think that the two, five, one to the C major, which is coming up next, is a little bit redundant, especially because in the last bars, we have the long two, five, one to end the tune out. So what I wanna do instead is do something that jazz musicians love to do, which is use blues harmony. So what I'm gonna do is cross out the D minor seven and the G seven, and I'm gonna add an F sharp diminished seventh. Okay, F sharp diminished seventh, 
and that's going to get us back to our C major seven. So now it sounds like this. There's that F sharp diminished seven, sounds really nice. And back to the C major seven, the one chord again, okay? Now again, we have these two bars coming up of C major, and that's kind of really redundant. And jazz musicians, we love to add extra harmony. So what I'm gonna do is actually add a six chord in here. I would love to make it a dominant six chord because jazz musicians like to do that as well, but it won't fit with the melody. So we'll add an A minor seven here and make it a six chord, all right? Now, one of the big rules when you are reharmonizing is you can really use any chord you want technically, but you do have to honor the melody and make sure that whatever chords you are using fit the melody, and that's why I chose the six chord. And then we'll go ahead and end the song out with the two, five, one that we had from the last level. So in totality, this is what level three sounds like. <laughs> heating up now, but let's move on and make things even spicier with level four. So with level four, my goal is to add even more harmonic movement and even more color using some specific tactics that jazz musicians use, both while improvising, but also to add more harmonic movement while they're comping or even within their compositions. So what we'll do is we'll start it out just the same as before. <laughs> with the two five to the six, the B minor seven flat five, E seven, A minor seven. But what we're going to do is add what we call a passing chord in between. So we're gonna go A minor seven to A flat minor seven to G minor seven. So A flat minor seven to G minor seven creates this chromatic movement. So now it sounds like this. keep that G minor seven and C seven going to the F major seven. So, but what I really want to do is add even more color to this. And while I did like my F minor seven B flat seven idea, I'm going to go ahead and cross that out for now and try something completely different. And what I want to use this time is what's called tritone substitution. Now tritone substitution is simply substituting a dominant seventh chord, a tritone interval away for another diatonic chord. So what we're gonna do right here is the same bar with the F major seven in beats three and four, we're gonna add an E flat seven, sharp 11, sharp 11, because the sharp 11's in the melody. Then we're gonna add a D minor seven, which is the two chord of C major, what we're trying to get to. And then in beat three of that measure, we're going to add a D flat seven, sharp 11. So now essentially what we have this is chromatic moving situation, but we're using these tritone substitutions. So it sounds like this. <laughs> So really nice sounding chords here, right? So like really funky stuff sounds great with the sharp 11 chords. And this is really making it sound a lot more like jazz. We'll let the C major seven sit right here, but with this G minor seven, C seven back to the F major seven, I feel like it's a little bit redundant once again. So let's add tritone substitution again right here. And let's just call this a G flat seven right here using chromatic movement. So G minor seven to G flat seven, tritone substitution of five going to F major seven. So now it sounds like this. Right? So really great way to add more tension into the music. Now, I really did like my diminished idea, the sharp four diminished, adding that blues harmony, but I really would like to add a little bit more harmonic interest into this music. So what I'm gonna start doing now is after this F sharp diminished seven, I wanna cross out this C major seven and turn it into a C major seven over G. Now, whenever you see a chord like that, it just simply means that G is in the bass. So in this case, the fifth. So now I'm going for this sound. 
Okay, G in the bass. And the reason I wanna do that is because the next chord we're gonna do is a passing diminished chord. And this passing diminished chord is gonna be a G sharp diminished seventh. So essentially, if you really look at this, we have F major to F sharp diminished to C major over G to G sharp diminished, and then we're going to our A minor seven six chord. So we have this bass line chromatic movement. Sounds really cool. So it sounds like this. cool gospely blues stuff. So already this has added a lot more harmonic interest for me. Now in the last four bars, the two, five, one to C major seven is perfectly fine, but I actually think we could add even more harmonic movement. Let's cross out this two, five and instead add a three, which is E minor seven, and then a six, it's A seven, and then a two, which is D minor seven, and then a five with his G seven, to one. So now we have a three, six, two, five, one at the end. So it'll sound like this. So that sounds really cool. So in totality, level four sounds like this. at the end for an ending is simply what we call a ladybird turnaround. It's basically Tad Damron used this in his composition Ladybird. So it's C major seven, E flat major seven, A flat major seven, D flat major seven. So it's like going the one chord and then taking a major seventh chord, a minor third up, and then a perfect fourth down. We go to an A flat major seven and then a perfect fourth across to D flat major seven and usually resolving back down to a one chord. So another cool thing you could do with the turnaround at the end. All right, so if you wanna start applying this stuff on other songs that you know, well, one tool you might wanna have in your tool chest is understanding music theory and how it works in jazz standards a little bit better. So on the screen right now, I have a video that's called The Most Important Music Theory for Jazz Standards. You're gonna to wanna to watch that one next. So go ahead and click that one on the screen right now. If you like this video, please do me a favor, hit the like button, really helps the channel out. Of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.